Welcome to The Speechy Show. Being a speech language pathologist often means having too much work and not enough planning time. To beat the overwhelm, we're bringing you the tricks and tools that will make your job a little bit easier. Hey everybody, welcome to The Speechy Show. I'm Carrie Clark from speechandlanguagekids.com. And we are here today with Christy Knickerbocker from Ah Tempo Voice Voice Center. There we go. <laughs> How are you, Christy? I'm well, Carrie. How are you? I'm good. We're so glad to have you here. Today we are talking about what to do if you are not super jazzed about treating voice disorder children. So if you have some, some children on your caseload though with voice disorders and maybe it's been a while since you talked about that in grad school. <laughs> We're going to give you some tips today that will help you with the voice disorders. If you are new to the show, this is The Speechy Show. We do this once a week. I get on with another speech language pathologist and we talk about whatever comes up. We talk about one topic each week and try to share about five tips with you. So today we're here with Christy. We're going to do some giveaways here in a minute if you are watching on Facebook Live. So stay tuned. And while you are, we are getting started here, go ahead and type in what kinds of voice problems are the children that you work with having. So are you having problems with nodules or polyps, or maybe you don't even know, you just have some voice, voice problems in your students and you're not even sure what's going on. So go ahead and type that in so that we know what we're, we're looking at today. And if you have any specific questions, we can answer those as well. And while people are doing that, Christy, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and your business? Thanks, Carrie. So my name is Christy Knickerbocker. I'm a speech language pathologist, and I specialize very specifically in voice and voice disorders. I was a classically trained singer uh, in college, and I had a voice disorder myself. Mm. I had a cyst on my left vocal cord, and I had to get it surgically removed, and I had voice rehabilitation before and after surgery, and I really liked what my voice therapist had done for me, so I decided that I wanted to change majors and kind of give back to everybody, and I could, I could do such a good job with that because I, I've been a patient, and I can really understand Maybe not every disorder everybody has, but understand how frustrating it can be and how scary uh, it can be. Absolutely. Yeah, being able to take that perspective of the patient is huge. Yeah. Um, and so I run my own private practice in Fort Worth, Texas. It's called A Tempo Voice Center. And I am currently starting up a mobile video stroboscopy and fees clinic called Voice Diagnostics. It's in kind of the pre-stages. Uh, and so we're looking to grow that. Fantastic. Uh, next year as well. So. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, let's see. So um, we're going to talk about these. We have five tips to share with you today for working with children with voice disorders. Go ahead and share this on Facebook so that other people that are also working with voice disorders can see this as well. And if you guys have any questions as we're going along, go ahead and type those in. And don't forget to be typing in what kind of voice disorders your students are working, uh, dealing with right now. Okay, so the first point that we're going to talk about today, the first tip is flow phonation. Christy, can you tell us about flow phonation? So flow phonation is a type of intervention that is really helpful for your children with hyperfunction. And what I mean by that is they're squeezing too tightly with their vocal cords in their, in their voice box to try and get the sound to come out. And sometimes it's just that's what they're doing and that's the weird behavior or sometimes that has resulted in some physiological changes like vocal nodules or a polyp or even a hemorrhage. Um, and so this type of therapy you can use visual feedback for uh, in the form of a Kleenex. Mm -hmm. And so all we do is we tear down the side of the Kleenex where the, the fold is. Um, here, I can demonstrate that. So you're just tearing it like this about an inch in width and you're working on going from just airflow to blowing a little bit of air and sound about 20 percent sound kind of like the sound over a coke bottle would make if you were to blow and make a noise and it sounds like this and then you work to add that sound to rote tasks like counting one, two, 
And the idea is to get the person, the child to be voicing and making noise without doing this pressed whisper type of thing or a press talk kind of like this. So doing it with or without this visual aid uh, and really trying to help kind of circumvent the child's phonatory patterns that they are using to speak and introducing something that they can do that's fun and visual, um, but hopefully getting them to practice and have that be their no, no, their new normal. Awesome. So do you do that as like activities that you're doing in the therapy and then you expect them to carry it over or is this just kind of to show them the opposite side of, of that phonation that they're doing? So both. Okay. Um, using the technique in therapy sessions with different words uh, and then sending home word sentences and things, whatever they advance to that day. You don't want to send them home with sentences that they couldn't even get past the initial sound sure. uh, because they would be, parents would be frustrated. The child would not practice. Um, and if you're wondering how to do that in my uh, voice in a GIF for pediatric clients, it has plenty of flow voice tasks and very easy to follow uh, kind of how to's on that step one, step two, phase one and two, uh, and then things to help carry over with uh, voice journals. Oh, awesome. Okay. So if you're watching, so. that is a act an activity book. We're going to be giving one away here in just a little bit. So hang tight and you can get access to that activity book and we'll show you how to get, get a hold of that. Um, okay, one additional question I have on this. Do you need to wait, let's say they have nodules or hemorrhage or something like that, do you need to wait until that's cleared up before you do this therapy? Or want, can you do that while they're still healing from the other things? So two-part answer to that question. <laughs> you should not begin any intervention until you've had an examination from an otolaryngologist, uh, the fancy word for an ear, nose, throat doctor. Um, if they can do a visual, if you have... Uh, access to at least an, a nasoendoscopy where the camera is going through the nose to see the vocal folds, or at best a video stroboscopy where the flashing light shows the vocal cords in slow motion. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see what's really going on and, and how they're performing during a phonatory task. Um, when you're doing that, you're helping yourself by not causing any further damage by your treatment. Um, Nodules do not disappear uh, unless the child stops the abuse uh, to the vocal folds. So nodules are forming because the vocal folds are colliding so hard and so many times, very intense, being a loud voice uh, over and over. And the only way that's going to happen is if you introduce a behavior that will stop that from happening. It's kind of like if you are wearing a pair of new shoes, there, there was some shoe that's been kind of all over Instagram that everybody's been buying. What is that shoe? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, but wearing a new pair of those shoes, uh, they start rubbing a blister. If you keep wearing the shoe, your blister will pop. It will hurt, but it will eventually callous over, and you won't even know that it used to hurt, but your skin is forever changed until you stop wearing that shoe. Mm -hmm. Shoe stops being worn, skin goes back to normal, but it takes a while with that new um with that new way of voicing. Sure. So you get the, the clearance from the ENT and then <clears throat> you can start these after you get the clearance. Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, so if you guys have any questions on any of this as we're going along, go ahead and type those in now. Okay, so we talked about flow phonation. The next one we're gonna talk about is vocal health and hygiene. Christy, tell us how this looks for our children clients. So this looks in the form of making sure that your child on your caseload is very well hydrated and this can be topically or systemically and that just means from the outside and from the inside uh, you need to make sure that, that you are limiting secondhand smoke for this child obviously your four and five year old kiddos aren't lighting up cigarettes mm -hmm. but they may not be able to help being in a home grandma you know visiting grandma where you've got uh, smoke in the air um, trying to teach them not to yell or not to talk loudly for long periods of time is another uh, piece of this hygiene to, you know, try telling a child, don't yell on the playground, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, things to help entice them, uh, these games that I have come up with. Um, and then I, this is available for free on my website. They are bookmarks to help teach good vocal hygiene and vocal health. Um, but trying to keep it fun and keeping them, uh, 
engaged in that. Obviously, they shouldn't be drinking caffeine, but you never know. Yeah. So that can <laughs> aggravate reflux and it can dry out your vocal fold tissue. Uh, and then trying to encourage them not to grunt when exercising or, or make weird character noises. Oh. Sometimes they end up, they come and they talk like this. Not that that's going to automatically cause them to have a voice disorder, but it just kind of continues to put pieces together if they have the genetics, if they're dehydrated, if all the things kind of become a perfect storm, they may develop something like that. So if they already have developed, uh, making them very aware of, of how to be um, healthy and have good vocal hygiene. Absolutely. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and we will share the link for that bookmark. We'll share that on the Facebook comments and also in the show notes of this over on my site. We will also share the link to the activity book that she's doing a giveaway on here in just a little bit. Okay, so talk about straw phonation. That's our third tip today. Okay, so this is a, another really visual, great idea. You can kind of just go with this. Um, and it's based on research done by a man named Ingo Tietze. And it is to create this back pressure in the back of your mouth to help the vocal cords vibrate without excess tension. Hmm. And so what you're doing, you can't, it's very hard to do this incorrectly. So that's what <laughs> makes this tool so fantastic. So um, you can get a cup with water. Uh, I get these straws at the dollar store, the Dollar Tree. Um, you don't want to go too narrow in diameter, although that creates a more artificial effect. It's harder for the child to do. So you can kind of get to find a happy medium with the diameter about that much. Um, so all you need to do is put your straw in about an inch or so of the water and then blow bubbles and then add sound. Can you hear that okay? Yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can do hills and accents, sing songs. <laughs> <laughs> I love okay. it. Uh, just to encourage all of that is, is making the vocal folds release that grip of tension that the child is most likely using uh, when they're a hyperfunctive in their uh, phonatory behavior. So it's an excellent way to do this. I've got a uh, relatively inexpensive product on my uh, Teachers Pay Teachers website as well as my website um, with these cards to help kind of vary the sounds and it kind of, you know, it can get more. You can add glitter to the water. You can add uh, food coloring as long as they don't drink the glitter. Uh, that's <laughs> kind of hard when <laughs> you bring that out and you're like, please don't. No. Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> that would not be ideal. Um, but, you know, this kind of, you know, helping downward glides, louds and soft, growing, growing loud, growing soft, um, making it fun uh, for doing that task because it's, it's really hard to mess up. Awesome. I'm taking some notes of the things I need to link to. So we're going to link to the book, the bookmark, the cards for the straw phonation, and the um, voice in a GIF pediatrics activity book. So stay, stay tuned. We'll get you those links. <laughs> All right. And don't forget, we have some giveaways coming up in just a couple minutes. We're almost through our five tips. We have two giveaways for you today, the voice in a GIF activity book, as well as uh, two free months in the, my membership program. So stay tuned if you're on here with us live. Okay, so the next tip we're going to talk about, number four, is resonant voice. Tell us about that one. Okay, so resonant voice is a type of therapy that is going with how you hear yourself and how you feel the sound. So it's a tactile sensation and roots are in uh, Mark Madsen and Arthur Lee Sack. Uh, Kitty Bertolini has done a program that you can take webinars on to, to learn more about this technique. Um, but basically you're just trying to put the sound out of the throat and into the front of your face, this, encouraging this forward focus resonance. So uh, the target and isolation for this is a hum and there's many ways to do a hum, and I talk with my kiddos about this, and we practice the idea of negative practice, which I'm sure you may be doing in this, in the back of the throat, and then trying to throw it forward like an egg is in your mouth with your lips closed, trying to buzz your nose and cheekbones like this. So as we go back and forth, they 
can start hearing and feeling the difference as we encourage that hum to go into M words, M senses. Um, it's something that you probably remember learning about in graduate school if you haven't heard of anything else uh, that I've introduced. Um, but that's what it's, uh, the basis is. And again, I have uh, in the Voice in a Jeff Pediatric Edition, there are, are journals, coloring pages, and lots of activities for single words, sentences, conversation, and then advanced tasks. Um, after that, including masking and uh, things like that uh, for carryover purposes. Perfect. That's that's the best explanation I've ever heard of that because I've never quite understood what people were supposed to do with that. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a that's a thing. I just don't know how to do it. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, I would always get so confused because in school it was there are so many ways you could go. You know, what do I do? How do I choose what's the right route? And it's like, well, there's only if just a a handful, but I, I wanted it more specific because with everything else, it, it, was, it was very specific. Here are your phonemes, uh -huh. here are the language uh, problems, this is the part of the brain. Um, and so the best thing about this uh, activity book that I've created, I've included a, a flow oh, chart, oh, of which technique it. is best. <laughs> so you can flow down and say, does your patient have a breathy voice? And you can go, you know, yes or no. Can, and then it takes you through what the patient's stimulable for. And then when your kiddo can do one of them, you can try that. I switch all the time in my sessions. So if, if something was working one day and then the next day the child's doing it completely wrong, I am never afraid to switch gears. That's awesome. <laughs> right in the middle of things yeah. because if they're doing it incorrectly and it's not producing the target sound you want, you know, pick something else. But yeah, but this is cool. I <laughs> love flow movie. charts. I just love flow charts. I think that's great. <laughs> Okay, so we've got one more tip and then we're gonna do our giveaways. So the last tip is reducing phonotraumatic behaviors. Let's talk about how that looks for our children. Okay, so phonotrauma just is a fancy word for the vocal folds colliding in a way that's traumatic, uh, too hard, too fast, so loud talking, long talking, without a break. Um, and we wanna do this in our kiddos uh, be by way of saying not only fixing the way they're speaking, but their vegetative sounds as well. So I mean throat clearing, I mean coughing. If they're, <clears throat> <clears throat> I mean, I understand if they're sick, you can't really help if, if your child is sick, um, trying, but trying to make those coughs not so uh, abrasive when, when they're happening, um, as well as introducing diaphragmatic abdominal breathing. Um, you hear that word and it's like, oh, I don't really remember what that means. <laughs> so all you can't breathe air into your diaphragm. You can try. <laughs> it's a muscle though. <laughs> so what it really is just talking about is trying not to take a deep breath like this <sighs> because that's not very efficient. It's not going to promote your voice to carry over on the breath that you're taking. So encouraging the kiddos to breathe in and, and I've got a product for this called birthday candle breathing as well as there's a little blurb about it with a couple tasks in the book, um, the activity book we're talking about, the Voice in a GIF Pediatric Edition, um, about why is breathing so important. Uh, breathing inward to expand your belly and then blowing air out through your mouth like you're blowing out birthday candles and then squeezing. And here's the tricky part because you don't want them squeezing their throats. You want to have all of the effort being in the abdomen. So squeezing their belly muscles like they're doing a sit up. So oh. that idea of let's let the belly go in, even though you may be running out of air, don't squeeze at the throat level. Um, so trying to have that as a basis for everything that you're working on with uh, target issues, as well as um, keeping the throat clearing and the coughing down. Perfect. I love that. So you, you would teach the breathing and then maybe do some speech exercises where you're having them speak on a breath like that? Yes. Okay. They're, um, I mean, and working to how long can you speak on that breath? Mm -hmm. So you can go from, and this is included in that book too, you can go from single words, my, my mom, my mom mails me money. And then you're trying to go for a long, I love my dog with a tail wagging when I arrived home with treats and seeing how long. And, you know, kids like to be competitive. So, so keeping them <laughs> saying, how long can you do without squeezing from your throat yeah. and without going into vocal fry? Because yes. we don't want to talk like Kardashians, okay? <laughs> what? Um, 
Use some air uh, when you're talking. <laughs> Use <too>. some air. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. Okay, I think those are five really great tips. I hope that was helpful for all of you watching. We are gonna go ahead and do our giveaways now. So, Christy's been teasing this book. Tell us what's, what all is in this book that you're gonna give away today. Okay, so this is Voice in a GIF Pediatric Edition, and it's specifically voice rehabilitation for kids. It includes everything you need, basically. I mean, this is a, a one-stop shop if you there are other activities for sale in my store that delve a little deeper into these things and kind of can give a variety of activities for your kiddo. But if you have no idea how to begin treating That's the me. child that just landed on your caseload with voice disorders, this is, this is for you because you'll look like a voice expert when you have this. And I specifically made it where it's easy to follow for the kids and really for you guys because... <laughs> who's been in a session and it's like, crap, I forgot to grab that. And then you're frantically trying to read in all this text, what you're supposed to be doing. So why not make it where these are not only accessible as homework handouts to send home, but you've got easy to read large print things that you can follow and <laughs> wing it because let's face it, we're doing that on a daily basis, right? Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but you can really act like you've prepared and, and just pull this out. Yeah. Uh, Tanika says nice so, ideas. She's excited about that too. <laughs> yeah. It's um, it got semi-included vocal tract exercises, which is the straw phonation, uh, the, the bubbles in a cup. It's got vocal resonance and then it has flow phonation as well. Um, I've got carryover tasks, the breath training, like I was talking about, and then an awesome vocal hygiene checklist. That, mm. It's a great tool to send home with your kids and give to your teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's nothing more embarrassing than having to go to speech um, when you're a kid. So I know that trying to sit in and give education to the kids in the classroom who may not know what voice disorders are, not know what speech therapy is, uh, you know, encouragement with, with handouts for uh, parents and teachers to help kind of break that ice and say, yeah, Johnny's going over here to help with his voice. You can help him too. Let's all get our straws out. Um, you know, that'll encourage carryover because mm -hmm. the friends, the family, that's who's with that kid all the time, um, teachers as well. So absolutely. All right. So we're giving away one copy of that. If people don't, if for the people that don't win the giveaway today, though, where can they find that? So they can find that and a bevy of other <laughs> voice related resources on my Teachers Pay Teachers website. Uh, you go to the search bar and you type in A Tempo Voice Center. A T E M P O, uh, and you can go there. They're available um, on my website as well, uh, and there's freebies also. Perfect. Uh, lots and lots of freebies too Excellent. that are helpful. Okay, so we're gonna give that away in just a minute. We're also giving away two free months in my membership, the Speech Therapy Solution. If you're not familiar with that, that is my exclusive membership for speech language pathologists. Once you get in, you get access to training videos and a materials library with things you can print out and use right away in therapy. I also answer questions in a Facebook group and on the website, plus there's a monthly webinar. So all kinds of good perks in there. And I'm giving away two free months to the person who wins my giveaway. So here we go for the giveaway. You guys ready? I'm gonna ask a question. The first two people to respond on Facebook Live here today on January 30th are going to win. So the first person to respond is gonna win the voice book. The second person to respond will get the two months in the membership. So here we go. Ready? Get your, your thumbs ready to type. <laughs> okay, name one cause of voice problems. The first two people to type in a cause of voice problems will win the giveaways. Drum roll, please. I keep talking about how I need to get some like suspenseful music in here. <laughs> Because there's a delay. Here we go. Deanna says nodules. Deanna Rabinovitz. I totally butchered your last name. And Jenna Douglas says polyps. Wonderful. Okay, ladies. All right. So Deanna wins the voice book. How do you want her to contact you? Uh, via email. So, or, or Facebook's fine. Okay. Let's do that. They're my Facebook page. Autumn Perfect. Voice Center on Facebook. Just, and I'll get that sent to you via email. It's a digital copy of the book. And so you can print it off and get it bound. Perfect. Oh, you would like it. All right. And Jenna, you win the two free months. Go ahead and email me at carrie at speechandlanguagekids.com.
That's C-A-R-R-I-E. And my assistant, Kenna, will get you set up with your free membership. All right, and we had a bunch of other people chime in too. Wonderful, thank you, everyone. Okay, we hope that that helped you with your voice cases. If you guys have more tough cases that you need help with, you are welcome to join us in the Speech Therapy Solution, my membership site. You can find that by going to speechandlanguagekids.com slash join, J-O-I-N. All right, and Christy, where can people find more about you if they'd like to see all of what you have to offer? So I blog on my website, which is autempovoicecenter.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram as well. And it's at Christy underscore voice, K-R-I-S-T-I-E underscore V-O-I-C-E. Perfect. Uh, there and, and my Teachers Pay Teachers website. You can follow me and get alerts when I post a new product that you must have in your in your voice uh, treatment if you like it. So That's wonderful. Uh, well, there's a, you, you showed a ton of really good stuff, so I'm sure you have even more goodies on your Teachers Pay Teachers store. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining us today. Tia says, great info. Thanks for the session. And Amy says, Thanks, very Tia. helpful tips. We got some, some good feedback today. So join us here next Monday. Uh, we're not sure who's going to be the guest next Monday. It may just be a solo show with me, uh, but we will, we will shoot that out on Facebook so you know what's to come next Monday. Or if you're watching the recording after the fact, you can always head over to the Facebook page on Monday afternoon and see what our latest uh, Speechy Show Live is. All right, thank you all for joining and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today on The Speechy Show. We hope today's tips have helped you feel a little less stressed and a little more confident about your work. If you're looking for more stress busters and confidence boosters, we'd love to have you join us in The Speech Therapy Solution, where you'll get access to a huge library of premium training videos and another library of print and go therapy materials. You can also get help with your tough cases by joining Carrie on the weekly Q&A calls or by posting in the exclusive Facebook group. Plus, group members can join us for a monthly webinar that can be used for continuing education credit. Head on over to speechandlanguagekids.com slash join to check out all the amazing benefits of the Speech Therapy Solution membership. Bye for now.